Post game on Monday, LeBron and AD revealed the exact playset they shut down on the Warriors' final offensive possession, a now regularly used and renamed in various playbooks across the NBA, AI Hammer Action, a playset commonly used by San Antonio and that was coincidentally invented and named after Laker coach Darvin Ham back from his playing days under coach George Carl in Milwaukee. What are you talking about? Which one? When Steph threw it out of bounds? That one? No, Dr Draymond throws it baseline. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. On, the, still. on the hammer action. Um, yeah, they were trying to run a hammer action for, uh, for Clay. I think we were uh, switching everything. And when I seen, uh, I think it was Wiggs set the, yeah, Wiggs. the, set the, uh, the, the hammer action for Clay. Just read it and just taking them out, not even paying attention to the ball, and I just turned around and the ball was there. So. The Lonnie Walker game fueled the Los Angeles Lakers to a double digit game four comeback in the later stages of the second half to the point where LA is now one win from reaching the conference finals for the first time in their home gym since 2010. Looking to be the last of four California teams standing, the Lakers' post trade deadline run, as I've said since day one following these trades, will go down in history. All that matters for this hard-nosed 15-man group, however, with that dog in him, is passing the Boston Celtics for the most rings of any NBA franchise by adding number 18 later this spring. Following today's film breakdown, looking at LA's best defensive and offensive possessions, stay tuned for an edit at the end that just might make the Lakers' togetherness unstoppable if handled properly. Right quick, subscribe to join just the 11.9% of you watching that are subscribed if you haven't already. Thank you kindly for supporting this platform as well as y'all do. The Purple and Gold have a 39-1 series record historically when leading three games to one, but first and foremost wanted to point out how this series has replicated the NBA Finals. Being a top-notch NBA talent and nothing else is required to get minutes from a player's perspective. From a fan's perspective, the coaching matchup between Kerr and Ham has featured high-level execution, first-class game-to-game adjustments, and all-around has been a chess match on a basketball court that I've been blessed to cover the ins and outs of. We'll get to a few of Darvin Ham's playsets and a breakdown of Lonnie Walker's night in the limelight. Leading up to that, these were my favorite playsets and general moments which got it done for the Lake Show in Game 4. Stay tuned. This semi-transition 5-0 pick and roll sees D'Lo make a pristine skip pass to the weak side wing, where on the catch, Reeves jabs like he's going into either a drive or a jumper before swinging it to LeBron in the corner, who isn't phased by Wiggins being directly in the vicinity and stays poised for the spot-up triple. Very next possession, Lakers run a patented early offense play set of theirs titled Flip Cut, essentially where the ball handler, in this case Reeves, makes a slight drive entry and the trailer, in this case LeBron, gets a flip pass and gets a downhill cut. Usually it's D'Lo, but after the Warriors made adjustments to neutralize Russell after a big game three, the Lakers displayed their depth by showcasing the fact that multiple options can step up into that number three scoring role. Austin Reeves was that guy in game four. As Heary fills out the corner in transition, no one puts a body on him with the Warriors not communicating, LeBron draws the eyes of all four defenders, and a bullet through the lane sets him up. Dennis Schroeder had a good night as well, and here he proceeded to be a menace with this crucial sequence. With the Lakers down seven, first he pulls off a Jose Grand Theft Alvarado by hanging around in the far side of the backcourt. Dante makes an ill-advised inbounds pass ahead of Curry, which Dennis was waiting on and intercepts. Then he cuts the deficit to five by catching Wiggins flat-footed by utilizing one of the more shiftily elusive momentum crossovers you'll ever see getting downhill to the cup. LeBron James played all but one possession in the second half, as the stamina from King James at such an advanced age can't help but be respected. You saw his three-pointer from the corner earlier on a night where he dropped the team-high 27, but here, Braun also displayed great energy and balance on his jumper. The Warriors switch this pick and roll, which in turn gets LeBron the favorable matchup to work on in clay, and after the between the legs cross, a couple impulsive hesitations, a momentum cross left and shoulder down attack, the hang time LeBron gets on this angled fall away was impressive. He gets an even more favorable matchup when Curry switches onto him the very next possession, as the King draws the double team with the rotation from Draymond on the baseline, 
and somehow weaves a drop-off entry through all of Steph, Dre, and GP2, and an elite jump hook from AD finishes it off. Before getting to AD's monster first half, as well as Lonnie's masterclass and the ATOs from Ham, plus more, LeBron likely had the highlight of the night with this defensive stance, where he switches on to Curry after this high on-ball from Green, pressuring Curry well outside of the arc while acting flat-footed, all to bait Steph into a quick first step to his offhand. But LeBron tracks down the take using fundamental forearm-to-body defense, timing his steps before elevating for his second block on Steph specifically in this series. Anthony Davis had 23 on the night in what was a rare consecutive stellar performance for the brow. AD had 19 and 6 in the first half alone. Anthony's got the smaller wigs matched up on him on the block, but just as the double from Draymond's coming, watch this video game-esque drop step to his right to big body wigs out of the way and beat the double team. Early offense play set like you saw earlier, but this play's titled 4 out to 5 out, where the 1 in D'Lo executes it perfectly by dribbling it out to the far weak side. The 5 in Anthony trails the play before receiving the kick out, and D'Lo follows his pass around Anthony, which fakes a handoff slash DHO. There's an option for a weak side pick and roll to branch out after that, but Davis just catches and drains the midi from the elbow. We looked at this same punch AD action in my last film breakdown, go watch that to find out the logistics of this play, but the off-ball cutters, in this case being LeBron, who's again dive-cutting, and D'Lo, who instead of Reeves like last time, is V-cutting, cut elusively to get Anthony just enough room for the clean ISO. To be fair, good defense by Looney, but excellent balance and footwork on this post-up and follow-away jump hook get the job done for the brow. Man of the Hour and Lonnie is next, but let's look at a few after timeout sets from Darvin Ham. Just sit back and admire the spacing on this B.O.B., aka a baseline out of bounds, which is titled Triangle. A great floating inbounds from Schroeder gets Davis the clean catch at the elbow. Steph seems unaware of what action this is, and the strength advantage that James has over Moody allows him to just muscle his way through the sophomore to get the backdoor cut, and Davis connects with James with an executed high-low entry pass. Darvin has a lot of RAM screen variations that lead into other actions, which Steve Kerr likely had his team prepared for. Therefore, it may have caught the Warriors off guard when out of this next timeout, Ham runs just a straight up Ram action with Schroeder setting a pin down for LeBron and LeBron setting the on ball for Reeves, which works to perfection. Aside from this shot out of a back end of the shot clock spread ball screen, which Austin finds a way to manufacture, it was Lonnie's clutch bucket getting that steered the ship down the stretch. Nonetheless, some timely creation from AR-15 right there. Bear with me as this first clip I found in a mixtape cuts off, but Lonnie pulls off a nasty inverted stop on a dime Smitty dribble, featuring a moving jab step to send Curry flying. One of many ill-advised Draymond passes on the night, Lonnie easily intercepts like he's CJ Gardner, out-hustling Clay to the loose ball and taking it coast to coast. Lonnie's gonna decisively curl off this AD screen out of a spaced out BOB to drain the long two, while dealing with the late closeout for Moody. Some slot-to-slot -slot action a little bit earlier. Saw Lonnie begin a mesmerizing fourth quarter where he scored 15 points by setting the pick for LeBron and swiftly popping out to the left wing to get more than enough space from Wiggins on his jumper. Following a Curry four-point play, with LA needing a response desperately to swing momentum, this, however, was the Skywalker's biggest bucket. Definitively bailing out his team at the back end of the shot clock, he isolates Curry before hitting him with a double momentum crossover and dramatic pull-up J. Utilizing reincarnated Kobe spirit at Staples, another spread ball screen with LeBron as the role man sees the Warriors play drop this time, but Walker just hezzies the slightest bit after getting downhill before putting up the silkily polished one-footed runner. Curry was to say the least having problems holding Lonnie in front of him, as in another back end of the shot clock bailout opportunity, instead of the double momentum, he goes between the legs cross left, then a hesitation cross back right before pulling up in Chef's grill. That said, despite that shot creating clinic, 
and stay ready moment one after the next from such an evident first class individual. Just like Rui Hachimura received bulletin board material from Desmond Bain back in the Memphis series, Lonnie Walker just received the same type of verbiage from Draymond Green. Draymond said on his podcast via La Volume, quote, Lonnie Walker beats you, you kinda gotta live with it, end quote. However, it was great to see LeBron and AD give all the respect in the world to their having stayed ready glue guy off the pine. LeBron said, as part of his amazing post-game interview with the GOAT in Chris Haynes, by the way, that, quote, we don't win this game without Lonnie tonight, that's for sure, end quote. Man, it's time to get rest now. I'm tired as hell, man. Get on my face. <laughs> Sun don't fucking stop. Sun gonna be up in the morning. It's not what we say out loud that determines our lives. It's what we whisper to ourselves that has the most power. Holy shit, a star is born. Everyone, Shia LaBeouf is in the house and he's ready to take the floor. Uh, I'm an intern. You're a god. You're an A-list god. I'm an ent that needed the up tokes. Come through. Do it. Winner, Ganyo. Listen, uh, for me, I can't worry about what everybody say about me. I'm LeBron James from Akron, Ohio, from the inner city. I'm not even supposed to be here. This series is every other day. You're playing a game. Narratives get changed and shifted each game. Stay off the TV. Stay off social media. Um, you, know, you, you win a game. Everybody's the greatest player in the world. You lose a game, they, they throwing dirt on you. It's literally that simple. It's called a meme. No, it's called a meme. Level one complete. Get harder and harder. Each level, alright? Y'all you know, play Call of Duty, y'all know what that I play Call of Duty, y'all know what that I play Call of Duty, y'all know what that means going to the next level. Y'all play Mario Brothers, you know what it means?